Okay. First of all, a warm welcome to all the readers uh, for today's session and to Alchemist Book Club. And before we begin this very beautiful session on relationship, let me take a couple of minutes in order to introduce the Alchemist Book Club itself, uh, especially for those people who are joining us for the first time. Uh, Alchemist Book Club uh, is started in the year 2018 as a very small uh, you know, experiment of friends joining together to discuss books. Okay, so my name is T.J. Srinivasan. I'm the, one of the founder members and I happen to you know, commence that particular meeting. And then over the last four years, we have been meeting. Uh, so we have met about 60 times and covered about 50 books and we have 100 plus members. Uh, and we have been discussing books of various journals, which includes, uh, you know, management to fiction and biographies to poetry. And we also had the privilege of uh, many of the authors were coming over to our book club meeting to uh, discuss about, uh, you know, various uh, uh, the thoughts and, you know, uh, the, the field of the books they have written, uh, which has given us an interesting opportunity for us to discuss directly with the author on uh, what made them to write and the deeper aspects of the book itself. So uh, we have been um, enjoying this journey of this four years uh, of converting a very private experience of book reading into something where we all build a community of sharing and uh, you know discussing and exploring further on books and what it can offer to us. Uh, with that uh, little bit of an intro on Alchemist Book Club, uh, today, uh, we have a very special session and all the sessions are very special, of course. We have uh, Dr. Devasana Desai with us, uh, who has uh, been uh, you know, tutor, mentor, and uh, an inspiration to uh, Atulia, who is our reader member. Uh, so Atulia is gonna be facilitating this entire session. And uh, I'm going to, before I hand over uh, to Atulia, just a few words about Atulia. Atulia uh, is um, doing our, uh, uh, you know, BSc Psychology in Women's Christian College. She is going to complete it this year. And uh, she is thinking of pursuing a career in um, marketing, MBA. And uh, I'm sure with psychology and marketing, coming from the marketing background, it's a, it's a beautiful combination to take it forward. Uh, wishing her all the best. And this is the second time Atulia is coming on to Alchemist Book Club in order to facilitate. I still remember the first session, you, Soumya, and Sudarsh uh, facilitating on the book Ikigai. And uh, thanks for being a contributor to the book club, uh, Atulia. And over to you uh, for this very interesting discussion on relationship and more. Over to you, Atulia. Uh, thank you so much for the lovely introduction. So first, you know, I would like to extend my warm welcome to all those who are present here today uh, on time for the session. So that really means a lot, you know, for, for both the author and myself because you, sh you showed up uh, for us. And uh, secondly, I would you know like to thank the author you know to for accepting this time and uh, making sure that it fits well for her uh, in her schedule as well as that a time that devotes most of her attention to the members. So um, happily ever after is not a fairy tale; it's a choice. That was that's what Dr. Devasena Desai would say uh, after she graciously agreed to be with us today and facilitate this discussion. And further delay, I just uh, a quick introduction about the speaker. Uh, Dr. Devasena Desai has a lot of feathers on her hat, and the small introduction would just be a glimpse into her career that spans over 30 years as an education counselor, gifted education expert, marital counselor, pioneer in psychological assessment and corporate training, parent and child counselor, facilitator, trainer, assistant professor, researcher, author, consultant, gifted counselor or educator, parent, trainer, and research consultant. Um, she has a fellowship from Bell and Blank, Iowa University, uh, USA, to attend the course on gifted education, a scholarship from uh, an esteemed university in USA to attend their summer school on parenting and family counseling in Ireland, and several scholarships to her name. And she also is in close contact with Mensa and Tribal Mensa, and also many more awards and accolades to her name. So with over 10 publications in the area of research to her name and four books as an author, we are happy to have you among us. And we are delighted to know that you are currently writing three more books, uh, if I'm not wrong. And uh, hope that you know this discussion remains helpful for both. The discussion is you know, helpful for the members and uh, to explore various aspects of relationship. And as I had mentioned in my message previously, 
uh, so let's not just limit this thing to this whole session to uh, relationship and marital relationship or spousal relationship with dr devasen being an expert in uh, areas like parenting and she herself conducts a lot of parenting workshops a glimpse into that would also be useful so uh, without further delay i think uh, let's just give the stage to her uh, and uh, she can help us understand more about her book and what she felt while writing thank you uh, very much atulia and uh, mr shrinivasan uh, and the entire team of alchemist it's a beautiful name and when she said about the book club there's something that i've always been uh, wanting to be a part of uh, being an avid reader myself and but lately i've been spending more time uh, with books Is related to giftedness take give me a call one can i request everyone to be on mute please thank you yeah okay ma'am please thank you and uh, i must thank atulia and her father venkatesh who is like a younger brother to me and it's been a pleasure to be associated with your team uh to begin with with the journey uh, i we have another author mrs anjali joshi and uh, elderly uh, senior most counselor and uh, psychologist uh, she has a vast experience more than 30 years working in the area of uh, uh, psychology counseling and also working specifically with people uh, in her husband is from the army force armed forces so working in schools and working with children and uh, it was the idea of pulling both our resources as counselors and psychologists having worked in this field and seeing several innumerable cases uh, on relationships it was an idea that we uh, dwell in writing our experiences and putting all the learnings and insights that will help because it pained us to see that relationships have become uh a very difficult task in today's world and uh i must say though the book looks like uh you know an idea where it's culminated from both our uh, understanding it's a pearls of wisdom that she has put in which has woven this book into another level entirely uh unfortunately she is not able to join us today mainly because she is in the us with her daughter and granddaughter and i think it's too early in the morning and uh it would be very difficult otherwise she would have definitely loved and joined this group uh, because she's an avid reader herself she has uh, two three books to her credit in marathi and uh, and also is a member of a book club in pune pune is a place where a lot of people read a lot of books and they uh, definitely ensure that they are literally at their uh, top basically uh, to begin with when uh, we wrote this book and uh, we wanted a title um being an academician myself i was looking at something serious something provoking which will talk about you know really wake up people and look at relationships in a different uh, style and the only thing that came to my mind at that time um seven year uh, about four years ago while we were completing the book was for god's sake try staying in a relationship the challenges that we face today uh are so many and that makes uh the title very apt basically <clears throat> i'd like to read uh, from a small uh, poem that i wrote about relationships several years ago um, when i was not married uh, i didn't know what relationship meant but i think it was just this idea of romance and wanting to see the world with rose tinted glasses and yet uh, the mature intellectual side of me wanting to see the independent side of being in a relationship i and you the relationship everybody has a role in this world you have yours i have mine if i had yours and you had mine we would no longer be what we are i the individual individuals differ that's why we are together if i were you and you were i we would no longer be a couple i would be i still and you would be used to to make the i we we decided to marry and as couples i will remain i and you will remain you but there are times when we become we and that is the day we begin our relationship as one we we is hard to achieve between you and i 
but the struggle is on for the we within the I and you. That is how life begins to flow. And I thought this is kind of sums up what exactly the entire book is all about. Um, okay. So the book uh, really travels from how relationships really begin. We talk about the initial rush of high of romance of seeing the opposite sex, a man meeting a woman, a woman meeting a man, a girl meeting a boy, a boy romancing a girl. And all that wonderful feelings that come out of dating, giving gifts, uh, secret meetings, long conversations through the night, and the feeling of light, romantic, colorful feeling is something that we all want to hold on to because that feeling is so beautiful and it kind of gives you a very cloudy and a very fluty kind of feeling. And college romances are something that we always cherish because it has no, uh, in our mind, in our mind, we don't see that nothing is impossible. We always feel something is possible. This will come out to something flotation. There are many who have this light, joyful experiences, and there are a lot of them who struggle even during those experiences. And it's only because we don't look into the signs that come in during our initial courtship and friendship. For example, if we have to talk about during that uh, courtship is that we don't look at caste creed, we don't look at finance, we don't look at where the person has come from, what kind of background, we don't look at personalities, we, we get attracted to similar people, we get attracted to extremely different people, we get attracted to people whom um, we know are somebody we would never ever dream of because it's bold and beautiful. In all these choices, one thing that really uh, connects us is that our feeling of this romantic uh, notion that this is something beautiful and I want to hold on to. And to support that, I must say, we have innumerable movies, books that go on and on giving us this very wonderful, clouded, foggy image of romance, which doesn't throw much reality. Man meets a woman, woman meets a man. There is a romance and there are a few hurdles and then there is total happiness and they are together. And the story always stops there. And there are very few books continues after that happily ever after. And there they are only talking about circumstances that bring a lot of tribulations and uh, hardships for the couple, but still there is romance because after all, it's a romance novel. So they have to keep showing connections and say how they work very hard and how they continue to be there together. And this fairy tale, which has been said time and again from childhood, that nothing is going to affect, everything is beautiful, tomorrow is a wonderful day, you, it'll be fine. But in real life, we know that is not possible. It is challenging. It is sometimes very difficult. They are very light moments. They are funny moments. Uh, there is a lot of humor, love and affection. At the same time, there are hard choices that needs to be taken. And the next slide. So uh, when we move forward, let's go to good things and look uh, ahead. Let's assume, because most of us are already across the stage of romance of the initial college days and we are in a relationship of few years, many years. Uh, what do we really look forward to? We look forward to being able to um, be harmonious, be agreeable with minimum efforts continue to have a sustained relationship where there is not push and pull. It's only when there is a push and pull we start struggling. So let's start with the very beginning when we talk about uh, preparedness in a marriage. This is something in India we don't talk about. 
we think we come to a marriageable age and we just, uh, you know, men, uh, we have matrimonial websites now, we have uncle aunties who are making, uh, you know, saying that, okay, let me look for the best suitor for you and matchmaking takes place. Matchmaking takes place in a couple of levels. If either families are doing and even if individuals are doing. One is the physique of the person and we're not saying 100% uh, handsome and good looking. To each person, the beholder is the person that matters. For someone, the athletic, the funny, the goofy side is something that they would be charmed with. For someone, the physique of uh, fitness and athlete uh, and that is the significance. For others, it might be the artistic uh, side of the person that makes it, the quiet, the constant talking person. So each one is drawn to a particular kind of personality. And we feel that this is something that will keep us going for the rest of our lives. When families look in, they look for, um, you know, whether you're from a middle class family, from a higher class family, whether you're a working class family, what really will work? And they say that my daughter or my son should be comfortable in this relationship. Many a times it is looked at, this family is so similar to us, I think it will gel. They don't realize that the, the boy and the girl may not be so suitable. The girl might be a very uh, forward, progressive person who likes the independence, who wants to work, who wants to do other things. And you have uh, parents thinking, no, the other side is very progressive based on what they see from the outside. And that is where we make a lot of assumptions. We assume that this would be a good match based on criteria, which is like finance, the looks of a person, the social standing of the person, and what we think will match in terms of personality. You can keep asking me questions in between if there is any, and we'll keep going uh, accordingly as well. Uh, what I enjoyed about this book most was, uh, I'm also a very visual person. I love drawing and sketching. I wouldn't say I'm an artist, but I definitely appreciate art. And a book which is so intense, um, what do we really do when we have to read and I have to be also engaged? And we thought we have to have a lot of illustrations and it's interesting to have, actually I had an architect who had this uh, interesting side of hers where she could do visuals and she put it very symbolically and beautifully for us. Somebody has written, what is the take on the future of marriage as an institution, especially with women becoming financially independent for the first time in their socioeconomic history? Yeah, that's an interesting uh, aspect. I'll definitely uh, put that across, Kamini. Coming to uh, just what we were talking about, um, when we move into a new relationship today, uh, there are two aspects, traditional, and it will indirectly also address what Kamini is really talking about. Traditional uh, families, traditional personalities versus modern or progressive personalities. Uh, I might be traditional, I might have kind of a progressive look, but my ways, my values, my principles may all be of wanting to cater towards the traditional side. If a person looks at me and says, this is South Indian girl, she has a short hair, she's done a PhD, you could be misled thinking that, you know, that there is a extreme modern side of it. There's a striking balance of because I'm in this field maybe, or the personality of traditionalism and modernism. What do we mean by saying traditionalism and modernism? And that's where the beginning of a lot of confusion, the roles that we have started taking. The traditional role of man and woman earlier was that man is a provider and woman is the person who looks after the house management. Today, that is not how it is. You even try telling that to any woman, they will not like it and we feel disrespectful and insulted. Uh, we play multiple roles and it becomes uh, therefore very important uh, for us to be addressed. And it's also confusing for men because uh, there's a traditional side and when you challenge the traditional side, we bring out the modern side and there's a lot of argument that you've misunderstood me and 
uh, how could you mistake me and stuff like that, which is very confusing for uh, their partners. Uh, what one needs to understand is where each partner is traditional and where each person is progressive or modern. When we look at traditionalism, we are talking about values in terms of uh, how things are taken care of in, in terms of the rituals of the house, the greeting of the house, what significance is given to the men and women in the house, what is respect, uh, all these defines how people are looked at traditionally. Now, let's say a traditional family says that saying wanakam, wanga, okaranda, all that is important when somebody comes in uh, or bow in front of them in, in salutations and etc. Et Another progressive person would say, if I hug and say hi, and my in my greeting, I bring a lot of uh, warmth, then it also is enough. Yes, Atulia, please move on in your slide. Um, next. Just go on to the next in the slide. And the next, yeah. Uh, so there, there are a lot of confusion as far as this arranged and the, uh, love marriage where it goes, where people feel that uh, arranged marriages are based on traditional outlook and uh, love marriages are more on, because I've made a choice, there is a more modern progress. Much to the belief, the focus is more on the individuals. Where are the times the person is traditional and where are the times the person is progressive? For example, I have guests coming in at home I am a person also working along with my husband. And unfortunately, I have a meeting extended and I'm not able to reach home early. The role demands that being the woman of the house, I have to be there to greet. I have to be the one who has cooked and I have to lay the table. That's what tradition demands. But modern roles could be possible that the partner steps in and says, you seem to have a meeting which is going to extend, our guests will be coming, I will take care of the house, you come in, and we will work on it together. Now that's being a modern and progressive relationship. But in case the husband feels that no, it is your role, and you will not come, you knew we were having a party, there's going to be an escalation of expectations, and therefore a conflict, and where uh, the woman of the house feels not supported and not understood and say, I'm working. So the whole thing moves into problem solving of that particular situation to roles, responsibilities. What's wrong with him? Couldn't he take care? As he, uh, the food was already delivered, he just has to keep it and greet the whole lot of conversation that takes place that escalates into you, me, and arguments, or you are always like that. And, you know, uh, I never get support and stuff like that. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, family links. Uh, I'm, I might be talking in fragmentation because the book covers so many aspects. And if we talk, we can go on for about three hours uh, or more. Family plays a very important and crucial role in Indian setup, mainly because um, parents do influence relationships directly and indirectly. When I get married, I am bringing a part of the way my mother has raised me, the patterns I've seen in my house, from my grandparents to my mother, to my aunt, which I bring into my relationship. In my house, women behave like that. The man comes in with his beliefs. In my house, men behave like this. And two people come with a belief system and a personal system that they would want to be implied in their relationships. And the first three years, the honeymoon puri that I call, where everything is romance, everybody is wonderful and welcoming, everybody talks nice things about you, and you move into the next stage where there is expectations, uh, and that's when you have a lot of problems. There is no um, statistic that says love marriage worked well uh, versus Indian marriage, um, arranged marriages. It is to do with the couple, basically. And uh, though much to everybody's belief, I think even there was an episode with Nina, Mia Nana, 
where they felt that you know love marriages work better because i think um, i knew the person before i got married um but you also have equal number of people said this this person whom i married before is not the person i live with today and that is also very surprising for me what happened what changed is started living together has changed what changed is i have too many dynamics i bring in along when i get married like i said i bring in relationships from the family lens uh it takes a couple of years about between fourth year of married life to seven to eight years when people really settle in into the respective roles so first is there is a pleasing thing i want to please the family i have moved into so you're being very nice and wonderful much to the kind of uh comments that you want to say but after 3 4 years you don't want to stop then says oh you behaving like this oh this is not what i expect and that's when the confusion really starts after going through this conflicting stage you settle into oh he is like this only and she is like this and you become comfortable with the same situation but the situation has not changed you've changed in accepting or you still fighting which has become a big issue in your relationship next slide next slide i won't talk about romance because our group doesn't have that much about it how to build trust this is really really very important and a lot of people struggle with trust and faith um today because the social media has made many things possible which creates a lot of um, doubts insecurities um and we don't realize because we have not created boundaries and norms uh, in our social media all those people in the instagram or facebook who look uh, you know where they put holiday photos and they look like this lovingly look that they have on uh, perfect pictures uh, which portray during holidays and festivals of we are one family we are a happy family might have actually had a big huge fight and they might have been a lot of problems but today we are so poised in front of a camera even a 3 year old when you just show the camera to click immediately there is a smile there is just a change that happens and there is this face of happiness that one wants to portray constantly behind all the pain and uh, you know troubled conflicts and things that are happening uh what do we mean by trust and faith uh we don't give benefit of doubt we don't pause it's just like the traffic lights you have the red orange and green when it is in green relationship is beautiful when it comes to orange that is a sign that we need to bring it back to green we have to work on it relationships is work in progress all the time the people who have had beautiful relationships didn't have it just like that every day people had to work on it i recall uh, because i'm in this field and uh, while i was doing my phd i spoke to my professor who had a relationship for 30 40 years and who are also um, academicians i said what do you think is the success uh, in relationships so he said one is communication two is humor and not sarcasm humor really developing humor from the very beginning and th- and of course the first and foremost would be trust and faith uh he says if i i trust my wife to take care of the decisions as far as finance goes then i do to step in i can ask a question with full honesty in terms of understanding the situation but i never ask in terms of uh so what did you do with that the tone the facial expression like uh, i know there you must have spent a lot of money i didn't even know about it how do you go about in all those dialogues that come behind every time we bring in our past when we have conversations and uh, this is again reinforced by all the wonderful tv shows that we have of soap operas which bring in dialogues again and again and again of doubt bringing people apart and uh, creating uh, manipulations and confusions our way of t- talking is not of understanding our way of talking with people is not of uh, helping supporting and encouraging and i find that very very disturbing as a psychologist because um and i can say that i'm a victim at times as well uh it looks like i am smiling and speaking so softly and wonderfully i do uh, 
you know, uh, get irritated and I do get very angry at times. And I question and I say that, why is this like this? And then I have to catch myself and say, it's going into orange. I need to bring it back to green. So they are signals that one needs to really tell to bring ourselves back, pause, not react. If I'm really, very really angry, go out, have a, you know, drive, go for a walk, you know, uh, go and have an ice cream, go and eat good food, do retail therapy if you want, don't go overboard, no drinking, smoking, uh, that doesn't solve the problem, uh, not overeating doesn't solve as well, but find ways to calm yourself before you can deal with the situation, that really helps. Trust comes in different ways, faith comes in different ways. Um, trust is in the small actions that we really do. Um, of not looking at the mobile and saying where he or she has gone uh, and then saying, I trust you very much. Uh, not saying that if, the, if uh, the husband seems to be coming late every day, opening the door and says, ah, you're late again. And in spite of knowing that he has an important assignment going on and therefore he's coming late every day, which he has informed and he doesn't feel the need to repeat it again and again, but the wife's taunting remarks is like, oh, there, I don't know what you've been doing in the office. I don't know who is uh, entertaining you there. All those slide remarks really put you down of the trust and faith that you feel that should be in the relationship. Um, and as I talk, it looks like, you know, it's so easy. But like we talked about, we need to work on it. A family that works consistently in building relationship really is able to build a uh, wonderful associations with partners. And for that, weekly meetings and discussions going out, self-time is very important. Um, husbands giving time to their wives, wives giving time to the husband. And if you are not able to do for various reasons, you tell that right now I'm very preoccupied, I'm not able to do this. But you have to say that preoccupied can't be the reason for ever and neglect can't happen. Because if neglect happens, irritation happens, irritation happens, it leads to doubt, doubt, anger, opinions, and then arguments, and there is a war happening there at home. Next. Uh, this is a very beautiful concept, which was taught to me by um, Professor Betty Lou Bettner, whom I met uh, very early in my life. Professionally and personally, we uh, really relate to this particular picture. These are called the four Cs. The first one is connect, second is capable, third is count, and fourth is courage. The first and foremost thing is connect. When we talk about connect, we're talking about communication. Uh, a communication being towards building, caring, and uh, loving, and being affectionate, being open even to talk. See, it's like seasons. There are uh, hot days, rainy days, um, <clears throat> cold days, and very, very um, dull days as well. Some days asked me in your experience, have you found couples in similar profession enjoying a better relation cause of understanding career demands? Like I said, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, um, it depends on personalities. There are people who can work together and there are people who can't. I worked with my husband for about 15 years. And after that, I felt, uh, I mean, worked together and separately as well till I decided that the familiarity was breeding contempt and I had to step back. Uh, to know the sign is also very important because um, we keep thinking that, no, no, it's a passing phase, I'll get over it. No, we have to know when you're saturated that uh, I can't be dealing 24-7 uh, uh, with the person at home and professionally. Rather like having um, a space of my own. When I come back, I'm fresh enough to receive and be affectionate towards my family. Connection is very important. And second is capability. When we're talking about capability, this is where the roles and responsibilities of couples really happen. Clarity of roles, who does what? And when one is not capable of doing what the other person does to step in. And if the person is incapable, when we say incapable, we're talking about like, for example, I don't drive the car. And you're expecting that I drive, I drive. It's not possible, right? But I can't give that as an excuse and say, therefore you drive now. The next alternative would be, I book a cab, today it's possible, only it was not, uh, or get an auto rickshaw or find somebody who can take me from point A to B. I can't be telling my husband and says, of course I don't drive, I need you, and therefore you are the only answer to this situation that I am in. 
Now that makes me incapable and that makes the partner irritated because he says, this is her area of handling this and she's come back to me. And the more I keep dropping such incapable incapabilities of mine or let's say learned helplessness into the partner the partner feels the it's just like four wheels you have to balance you can't put one load on only on one wheel and say the vehicle is going to go smooth the vehicle is not going to go smooth you'll have to slow down and tell the other wheel you need to build capacity to take it forward um and if let's say i am dealing with uh taking care of the children I could be a man or a woman. It, there is no gender to it. Sometimes men are also very beautiful uh, caretakers. I'm taking care of the children. And, uh, and then I suddenly, uh, the other partner feels, no, you need to spend more time. Let's hand over this responsibility to the in-laws or to the nanny. And you go out and do other things. That might make me feel the third one count. Where is, I'm not worthy of taking care what has happened to my position here? Something is happening. People are moving my position here. So it's almost like a, a, a musical chair. Uh, the king and queen have their own chair. And if the queen feels the chair is being tilted a little bit, not liking it, makes you feel worthless, then there's a lot of tension there as well. So Count is talking about worth of one person. When we go out, the way my husband addressed me, she is my wife. She is my better half. She stands up for me makes me feel worthy. When I go out, I say that this is my husband. I respect him for extra this, this, this. He brings these joys into my life. You don't have to really talk about it. It's the way you hold your hands, the way you look at each other, the way you say a few words. That makes you feel that I am worthy in the relationship and makes me feel secure. Many times that also is not important. I enter a get together and my husband just disappears. My wife just leaves me and says, goes off to the girl's counter and they're having a frolicking time. Uh, if it's, that's the arrangement, both are happy with that when we go to a get together, you meet your people, I'm meeting mine and we're happy. And everybody knows we're connected because during that get together of two, three hours, there are times when we stand together, we hold each other, we show significance of togetherness. That's wonderful. But People can see that there is a disturbance, there's a distraction, they are moving apart, they don't like being in each other's company. That shows disconnect and that shows there's some trouble in the relationship. The last is courage. Uh, when connection becomes disconnected, when you become incapable, when there is no count, the last is you get discouraged. You feel so discouraged that you feel, oh, the that kind of thing comes, that means the person is so discouraged, doesn't see any hope uh, in the whole relationship. When somebody comes to that stage, we highly recommend um, them to go meet a therapist, a counselor to help them. Uh, there are several times questions, why again a counselor, therapist? Today, I'm very saddened to see everybody has a family therapist and a counselor. Everybody's reaching out. And just the other day, I was talking about why do we really need? We need because we've disintegrated a joint family system, a system which is closely bound where people were related, people had time for each other, people nipped at the bud when things were going bad. We brought out nuances in the relationship which needed to be addressed. And today, we don't have time, we don't spend time, and therefore it's reached a stage where we need a very neutral experienced person who can look at it objectively and guide me. So there's nothing wrong in not wanting to go and meet a counselor or a therapist. There are times I had to go uh, being in this field as well. It need not have to be for relationship per se. It could be things that you struggle with. When, when I yell at my husband, I'm not sure I'm yelling at him for him having made a mistake. Sometimes the yelling because all the men in my life, I think and says, I think you're a male chauvinist. I'm bringing in my brother, my grandfather, all the people who, and I put that role and I bring all that energy and, and he really zapped the other person. So where this is coming from? I was just saying that milk all spoiled. I came home late, something like that. Like you, man, you don't know, blah, blah, blah. So you see, you need to not bring past and we need to build these guidelines. Uh, 
and that's where family meetings are very important where husband and wife spend some time either go out to dinner for a walk talk and it's like a pressure cooker talk it out um and don't wait for it to become like a food poison and wait for you to really bring out and vomit and when you bring out vomit you bring out a whole lot of dirt of past present future everything comes out with a lot of abusive words and anger which hurts each other and really brings you um that what has happened that i'm not able to really um you know uh, control myself what if both uh, knows their discomforts understands and gives space at times there'll be moments and both might get frustrated due to discomfort rising due to the personal expectations popping out how do you see this um <clears throat> thank you so much uh, i think it's bala uh, for uh, bringing that point across is that we can only work on ourselves and uh, we can have expectations we can share our expectations we can say we will give cues and help them support so that they are able to work but if that person insists and is not ready readiness is very important not ready for it ready means we're not talking about uh, you know they seem to understand what you're saying but they've never really not understood completely it's not sunk in totally for them to really feel the way you feel and make a change you can't do anything about it what you can do is change the way you address it and deflect so that you are able to uh, maintain peace for yourself and with time the other person it's called indirect coaching like for example if um, uh every time i feel that i have not been able to meet the expectation of my spouse and that makes me uncomfortable makes me incapable and makes me angry as well and i bring that anger out and i know after that i feel very bad and i say oh i've hurt you and i you always fight and i don't like this and my husband says oh you always do it but you still get angry you still shout and scream and you still bring the roof down and one whole week of nonsense i'm affected at work you are affected at work we know the pattern then what can we do we talk like adults and say can you give me a cue and you can see me brewing to tell me to take time off and walk away from the situation so that it's almost like if i want to die i want to die in peace give me that space give me that breathing space to breathe take be in control of the situation uh and with time this coaching this cue helps the other person and uh, like for example um in our relationship we had um where you know like let me just bring the example of a milk where uh, if it start boiling and you're so busy in your internet or your work you forget and you can get that smell of burning the minute you know you rush and you switch it off if i keep ignoring that what happens i have less milk than what it was and if i forget more i have a house which is stinking of combat that's what happens in relationships so uh the cue between us and the relationship is we say there is a bad smell so that means it's like you wake up something is not right you need to address and we as smart people will figure it out we should figure it out if we are able to so that happens next slide um so this is something that we came up with mrs joshi and myself we talked about it and we said that uh, uh, from based on our experience of so many years we felt that uh, couples uh, some seem to have this general honeymoon period in the first initial stage and then there is this fight of identity that takes place um the honeymoon period is over now i want to establish my norms in the house and each one is fighting for space that's a stormy period and to add to it you have uh, in laws interference to add to it you have a child or two children in the house add to it your profession is taking off and you really want to concentrate to become the big position and all this comes around the same time it is between like this mid 30s to 40s and uh, you really don't know what to do and then comes the reconciliation period when you make peace and you say okay fine i know she still cares for me I, you start looking for signs where things are good and i'm not talking about the good and i'm going on focusing on my expectations and the bad um my wife did still stand up for me my husband uh 
took care of the house when my parents were ill and I had to step out to look after them. And he didn't know cooking and still he managed. Or um, I had to move out of the country for an assignment and people managed it beautifully. And uh, I got support from my partner because he told the in-laws that she needs support and she needs to go because it'll help him or her go up, you know. Uh, and you have to remember, extended family members are either supportive or discouraging. And if you have people who are coming with these uh, one-line markers, I see that uh, he seems to be going more often than you. New than a particular, and uh, you also should have equal. Equal and equity are always confused. Equal is not like you go one time, I go one time. It's like the need in this context. What is the need for the family, and how do we discuss and make a choice? Today, the recent couple. I'm talking the people who are the millennials. I find a lot of them very sensible. I've had people who have had a post-graduation and got married and said, okay, next two years, I'm going to do my high degree, you work. And uh, after I step out of mine, you take over the house. I mean, you can take, uh, maybe take an assignment or you go in for a high studies. I'll manage the family. So there this seems to be some... Um, distribution which is more fair and more honest uh, that takes place and then you have the calm and the lull now this not necessarily goes in this particular order sometimes you might have strange situations where stormy might come first and then you have romance in the seven years onwards uh, and reconciliation and a lull sometimes the stormy period continues uh, for the rest of the life for various reasons either you have uh, Everyone need to undergo this cycle. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to. A stormy period can be avoided. Uh, <clears throat> it's just a ball mark in terms of uh, how people go. It's, it's like a cycle where people go in cycles of five years to 10 years. Uh, stormy period could be, we have to understand whether it is something I can change or it's outside my sphere of influence. Supposing my company was doing very bad, I never had, uh, I've had series of downfalls of uh, the risks that I was taking in my job and the money has been a constraint. What one needs to do or ill health of a partner or <clears throat> everything was going well and suddenly, <clears throat> you know, more responsibilities came because there was some alterations, you know, in-laws have stepped in in the house because somebody is not there. Uh, I need to support my extended family. There's so many responsibilities that come in. And all that uh, requires uh, a building of relationships where we look and we support. And in all this, the spouses need to look at the context of putting ourselves in the other person's position and talking. Uh, I know it's very difficult for you right now. I see your parents are struggling in your, uh, your uh, the sibling is having a bad relationship and everybody's stressed out and you might be stressed out too. I would like to support you in what way you let me know. Uh, instead of saying that is not a family of uh, concern for me, this is your primary family and you are neglecting us and you're spending more time. Imagine uh, questioning uh, the, uh, the husband that you can't spend more time with your sister or your brother with whom you would have spent the first 25 years beautiful years and they're very important people in your life and it goes vice versa so looking at being sensitive to each other needs is really very important next um, this is something um in terms of uh, it was taught to me in my school actually which is a christian school it, to me, it made a lot of sense. We're not talking from a religious context. We're talking about it as a paragraph that really relates. Would be, um, that's what we're talking about. Remember all the good things that somebody has done for you and bring it when you're really feeling very negative and discouraged. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one and see. So here, what they talk about is if you keep a stock of blessings or the good things that they have done, and you bring that to your mind, it will help you to not get clouded by or discouraged by what has happened today. You will feel that, okay, this is a passing phase. I need to give the person benefit of doubt. Maybe uh, there is a motive. I, I, maybe I don't understand it. And I don't want to add my negativity into it. 
is always very helpful. For example, um, just two weeks ago, I know of a friend of mine who's extremely um, fair, just, caring, sensitive to others. And I found that uh, in a past one month, not having any conversations and not having any uh, communication. And I said, I don't know what happened. Did I do something wrong? Uh, did I say something harsh? Is my relationship at stake? Uh, so I'm going on a negative spin without just messaging. Is everything okay? Is there anything to be concerned about? And talk about my fears. Instead, I started building up this entire, you know, being, being psychologist and all that, but still. Um, and then I said, I'm going on a spin. That's not right. And then I call up this other friend and I say, is everything okay with her? Because I find that one or two times you've interacted, this is how she's been. She's been curt, she's cut the conversation. And she said, it is not always about you. It can be something about her as well. She's going through a tough time. There are some issues in the family and they're sorting it out. And she may therefore not have time to be as friendly and as positive as she was before. Give her time and she'll get back. And then when I met her last week again, and I found that we were on the same page, same thing happens with the relationship. So if I find that in my spouse's life, there is uh, rain happening, thunderstorm happening because of various reasons, I shouldn't say that that rain and that thunderstorm affect me. I can take a number and move around very peacefully and calm as much as possible and be the balancing factor rather than bring on the rain and the thunderstorm so that we both are part of the whole thing. Have you come across happy relations based on minimal expectations? Is that even possible? <laughs> Partha, I would love that, right? Um, based on minimal, these are people who work very hard, very systematically every day. I admire. And that also is to do with personality and it's also to do with destiny. I believe in that when two people with fairly similar, I wouldn't use the word similar, positive energy um, of balance joined together. It's really very beautiful. Uh, I have a friend of mine whose husband has a very hectic job, even travels extensively, comes Monday to Friday, never then many times at home. And she's been a, almost like a single parent, managing the finance, managing the house and children and taking decisions. And she does it smilingly, laughing all the time. And even when she's cribbing, See, he is not there again this weekend and I have to do this on my own and all that stuff and she'll be laughing. You see how he keeps disappearing when he has to do these stuff. And I find the spouse saying, I know she is, seems to be going through some troubled time because uh, of certain things in her family and I need to go back home because uh, I want to, I wanted to have my time to spend time with my friends, but I think I will overstay uh, because I'm selfish and I want to keep having a good time here. I think I rush back. She didn't want her to join me, but I want to go back and spend time with her. Or say that uh, we both can't join you for a movie date because she is not up to it and I would want to be with her. Instead of saying, oh, this tit for tat adolescent kind of behavior is what we psychologists say. We need to really step up the game and not bring in like... Uh, quarrels of uh, teenagers uh, that's the revenge mode or uh, tit for tat those things come in your mind i'm not saying no we are human after all i also have full strategic plan and all that stuff and then i say when you start going in that orange and you're fueling to red is when you have to yeah we, we are, as humans you have to step your step and pull yourself back and say oh my god i'm stepping into red let me bring it to orange do all the breathing, the whatever thing that will help me. Talk to two people who will help me to calm down um, and then go back and say, what are the steps? And talk about it. There are families who do, uh, which I keep bringing in and I keep stepping away from it. It's called family meetings. So they have like once a week or once in two weeks discussions where all of them sit together and talk about what they did in their, in their uh, that week and what troubles them and air it out. Uh, and when it is done in a group, it, it really helps. And when you know, you cannot use that group for bringing a fight and an argument and pointing fingers. You have to bring only your feelings and say that uh, I'm feeling like this. This is what I'm sensing and this is what. 
and um, and if and the other person has to respect and just listen you don't have to say oh nee apdi irukka but na ipdi pannu nenche na idu senja no don't bring any other conversation just addressing feelings when we we are able to talk about our feelings and we feel our feelings are respected and addressed half of our um, conflicts and confusions really go uh even a gentle touch a hug uh saying that yes i i think it must have been difficult uh i i was not there uh i didn't see the sign that you needed me and i next time can you help me to understand this can you message me can you give me a call can you tell me explicitly uh hold me in the front and say i need you uh, i want you like this like this like this i want you to you know not go on a trip because i'm miserable i need you here or if you are going for the trip can you do this 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 for me stuff like that uh, we need to coach each other what will help us to calm us down because the other person can never guess because um the many common things that uh, i've heard men say is that uh like for example I-, i want you to sit down calmly with me and talk and when you start talking me calmly and that's when i get irritated said, how can you be so calm when i am really really boiling and that's when i have to say no i don't want anybody to talk to me at all don't address anything for the next 24 hours i want silence good enough or i think i'll go to my mother's house for two days and come to calm down i go to my friend's house and come back now these are or i go for a movie and i come back uh, whatever whatever helps you let me draw and paint hobbies are wonderful have to have a hobby either it's music either watching movie either singing karaoke going for a jog um having a good time you laugh it out play with your kids take them out helps really soothe children are really wonderful absorbers of your um turmoils hugging and kissing being there with them in their world really helps we don't use them as much uh we think we shouldn't disturb them and all that i mean we have to realize as uh, partners and as parents that we indirectly they're also seeing us the way we are coping and they're going to really take it into their lives so we have to teach them good ways of coping we can't teach them coping strategies that are actually going to transfer from one generation to the other generation of anger shouting screaming abusive words uh, aggression and stuff like that we need to show milder versions of how we need to you know the dignity in which my mother held certain things the grace in which my father uh, stepped in to support the family all these nuances that you learn is what you try it out and it's a journey of trying out you can't get it the first time some people will fall many times before they get it right some people get it right in the first two times so we really don't know but you can't say that i give up the only relationships that we would say we need to really uh, give up would be when there is violence violence toxicity when you say and these days these words are thrown very lightly or heavily toxic word is used even if there is a shout like i said the incident of milk oh that was a toxic environment at home i was shouted and abused we use words like that i was depressed as psychologist it makes me really sad that these words have lost the significance of what it really means because we we use it so loosely even my maid at home used ama na romba depressed a irken do you even understand what that means as a clinical psychologist i've seen what depression is if you go to the mental hospital you know what really depression is they are gone they don't maintain eye contact they don't eat they don't take a bath they eat really very little and uh, they actually don't talk if they don't talk or they're very violent that's depression actually you know we would move on to the next part there's less time yes sure uh yes i'd like that in fact if people can keep uh, asking questions and you know uh, come on video and have a chat that will help yes uh, so if i may request uh, any of uh, the readers to ask question by uh, unmuting yourself turning on your video uh It was a nice uh, discussion that you took us through. Uh, in fact, uh, I was just wondering, you know, in a relationship, there is a very thin line between humor and sarcasm because sometimes humor is mistaken to be sarcasm. So, how do we deal with such kind of things? Because 
especially in close relationship when you try to make things light sometimes it is being taken you know uh, there are situations like that yeah okay. we have to practice it's you have to really practice it uh, anil because uh, i know a couple of times when initially we were trying that's what i said we make cues when it starts getting to sarcasm the partner tells you it's getting into sarcastic and you stop there and then you have to practice what you say how do i say it in a way uh, one of the clue is that i always say is that we are never sarcastic to the people whom we work with we are very careful we are very guarded and we are very neutral when we talk to our colleagues but we bring all the worst part of ourselves when we go back home somewhere uh, we need to bring in that you know we bring into our mind that uh, if i if this was my colleague what would i say just for the sake of practicing just say don't think that this is my wife this is my husband kaila vandutala paakuren ipo enna pannala and that's the what's running in your mind actually you know uh, you know you you have all this violence in your mind adichi pottu you know i want to do all those things and i like that dialogue just go for it you know but do it in your mind don't do it out there because the other person is an intimate partner of yours imagine in a relationship uh, this is a person who has left everything both sides to come to be together who has left their comfort of a familiarity to an unfamiliar situation both of them for us together and we have to keep thinking that uh, there are couples during relation uh, on the wedding day uh, bring back those um, memories without nakkal kindal illama you know where you talk about where the freshness of the relationship they talk about um atulle i think you can switch off the this one i don't think so we need this ptt uh they talk about and remember it with fondness so that what happens is you you bring back that positivity back you know uh you say that oh and the kalantanal live oh how innocent we were nam ipdi la nanjam pari ipdi ipdi ipo ipdi la nam face panna vendida irukku oh that is a journey you know we have to see we have to talk about it basically communication is really very very important and uh, i know i keep saying that you can look at places where you can um, like what i do when we do workshops is that uh, we take these sentences and we change the sentences neutral and positive and show people because it comes with practice uh adha ungalku solum bodhu 20 30 years as a psychologist i can do all kinds of wonders when i come back i see my husband means i'm like ah inikku paaru unna enna pandran paaru naan unakka wait pannite irundhen nee varave illa all that anger is there right and and he comes back and i i have i i'm all there right there and i look and i say paavo is come give me an half an hour before i fire i'm still ready to fire i'm not going to forgive but then he sits and then he is saying so i i go with the neutral ground what happened enache you keep going and then he say oh ni varla i was thinking ipdila nanichittunde ho apdi apdila onnu illa so you take away the scene instead of you ready with an arrow and say okay fire i'm going to just come out there and and you know and then enjoy that it's almost like hunting you know you are the hunter and the other one is an animal and hunt mudichina appa vetri na kondute apdinte alla kolradhu idella onnume illa there is nothing the the other person is also you if that person is upset and for the next 2 3 days is miserable i'm also going to be miserable so i need to see how i can embrace that person into my life and that is where i keep saying when you are in that orange sign have two three cues that will help you you have to develop based on yours so engalukku na solrenla the cue is i have always tell that if i'm very angry i'm going to say i'm angry i i don't want us to talk i say i don't want to talk about it right now because if i talk i am not going to be saying things that i want to say and it will hurt me so the other person has to back off then again if the other person is charging and say illa na udu poradilla appadina then i just step out of the house and go for a walk and come back give that breathing or close the door it looks very horrible oh yeah monale ni kada satra and all that no i am saving us from a catastrophe of conflict it's okay doesn't matter you go for a drive and come back my husband goes and has 
nice vetla paaka and comes and says okay keep up pace last one by then he's calm down that vetla paaka has helped him a little bit yeah that's why i said no alcohol no addiction we're not talking about that we're talking about sensible people who can have a conversation thank you brinda brinda was there oh, okay she's an eminent psychologist who was there with us i wish we could have had her talk with us for some time um yes any questions i think there are no road maps to marriages everything i think each marriage is unique and uh, we have to work every day to make it a success and i am right. talking about 39 40 years back when we got married we were told the the key word was adjust i still remember my uh, parents and my elders telling me oh we are going into a conservative family you have to adjust so that was the key word and adjust is not a word in today's dictionary at all believe me today's children are all millennials and they all do exactly what they want which is i which is i think good in a way you are doing what you want yes good in a way thank you so much asha ji uh, i mean hats off 35 39 years i mean i really bow how i always talk to people how do you really manage and we like we said uh, the word adjust compromise again is all construed and new millennials also adjust and compromise they don't like the word that's all yeah they don't like the word now there also there is give and take is there it is in a different way okay yeah, different. let's go for a yeah. european holiday we have a good time let's go to the beach yeah. we have a good time i am back into form again it's a different form that's all yeah. but we would like to hide by saying i don't want to adopt the traditional words so today yeah. that's what it is yeah exactly. thank you so much thank you yes bala ji babu babu yeah babu go ahead yeah hi uh, i just want to uh, you know uh, ask you again uh, the question which i typed in i, I really love that uh, chart which you have put uh, about the life cycle like how it starts uh, after the marriage with an honeymoon and stuff like that uh, so actually i am in the third or fourth stage somewhere either in the understanding stage or the balancing stage like get to a time that uh, uh, no uh, <laughs> final thing but uh, my uh, point to you is that like is there some way so that like you know right now i am uh, worried about my children okay so maybe uh, in uh, a couple of years uh, they are going to step into their marriage life so is there some way where like we can pass on our experience to either avoid or shorten the uh, you know that stormy period uh, uh, any suggestions from you thank you thank you uh i think you brought in a very futuristic question if you may ask and uh, my uh, uh, what i would like to share is that they have observed um how you have handled conflicts uh, disagreements difficult times crisis and directly indirectly they've absorbed that similarly they've also absorbed certain not so good ones about ourselves my father is a person who's short tempered so i had to tell myself or oh, a person who gets irritated very fast so i literally had to do a physical uh, chart to myself what are the good things i took from my mother what are the bad things i've taken from my mother what are the good things i've taken from my father and what are the bad things i've taken and i looked at two bad things and i said what are the things i would want to each year develop so this is a systematic thing that is only because uh, i am in this field and I, i always want to evolve and want to see how i can do better look at it and then say what can i do about it and make so when i get irritated i don't say i am my father's daughter and proudly say i am also going to get irritated i coach my husband and says whenever i get irritated please tell me that i have reached a point of orange and getting to red i will stop because when you irritated you don't know you say the same sentence again and in different ways language is such a beautiful thing you bring it out in colorful tricolor series you know and you want to emphasize and make that person enjoy that color and that becomes a thing so getting your uh, children to say and they will not like uh, asha was saying rightly that today's children are also having to go through similar values principles they are not going to change but their ways of expression will change when somebody gave me a gift in my younger days i would thank them profusely and i would look at them adoringly 
and i will repeat it for the next few months thank you so much ninga vaangi kodutinga unga naala da unga naal today one thank you and gone and i'm like enna achi ivlo i thought of so much and i brought it and this person has not even typed one bloody thank you to me and i'm all angry i have to say when i give you something please thank me i like to feel appreciated i have to put it out there and that communication has to be there and another thing as a parent you can say is that you can share with me and ask me for my suggestions i will tell you based on my life you take what you feel helps you and filter what you don't want that's the best thing because many times parents uh, the couples feel that oh unga appa da influence onakku jaasti irukka adikadi nee pesitt irukka amma da influence jaasti irukka 24 7 phone liye irukka it may be not that i'm talking to my father 24 7 about okay iniki en purusham veli pombodhu ipdi pannaare na enna pananum no i may be talking to my dad about what i want to say the man in my life my husband may not be listening to the way my husband my father listens i would like to talk to my father it need have to be that i am talking about somebody else so we need to in you know communication keep clarifying and keeping channels open thank you thank you so much uh, that was really a futuristic question i hope I, we can elaborate on that but unfortunately they wouldn't be uh, i mean i'd like to give opportunity to others uh, counseling does help uh, my suggestion is yes but uh, please scan people whom you go to look at not just the degrees find out from people who is effective who is good who helps uh, you in that situation sometimes even as counselors we advise i advise supposing the wife came to me first and she was having some six seven sessions suddenly the husband comes into the picture he doesn't trust ah ninga wife kuda pesi avara side a irpinga i already come with the belief as a husband that you may not side me then i would say then please talk to another person whenever necessary we will do a joint session that will help you so we don't take that but there are people who come as a couple rendu perukume venum neenga solunga then we handle with them having said that uh, please don't reach out to me for private counseling because i am not taking counseling sessions nowadays uh, because uh, i have taken up a position of training counselors and developing their skills i live in pune for one and uh, counselors so that they can uh, develop their skills to handle uh, issues in in the school in the parents and teachers so i feel if i meet a person one to one i can only help or support one person but if i train 10 15 people i can support a lot more people so i am moving towards wanting to reach out to more people and that's why this book was also there where we wanted to see how we can at least help people to read and not make classical mistakes that we made before basically the this exercise i talked about looking at yourself what was my family you know how my family reacted to uh, savings and uh, money that is a very big question that always troubles in relationships uh, my family we never saved money there was no money to save so i never saved but now i can save but i am adopted this family style of not saving appa ma save panalla nanu save panna poradilla you see that's a stupid thing to do so i have to change myself and say that okay avanga panna mudiyala but i have money now i can save so so these things you have to know or uh, things like we talked wonderfully in the book about uh, you know mrs joshi and myself have given a lot of importance to finance as such and how caretaking has to be done of couples with each other uh supposing i somebody in the family is very ill one family style is that ellarum poi you you take care you check on them you sit with them you call seri it ya need sanji ya adu sanji ya another family is like please don't trouble me when i am ill i don't want to be disturbed at all i have to learn to respect the cues illa la enga family la vandu it has been told that i have to check on you every one hour otherwise i'm not a good Uh, a caretaker that does not help you have to look at the context same thing to do with finance uh 3 4 000 spending individually fine more than 5 000 it's a family we have to discuss together i can't go and say oh i have uh, suddenly come across some um, 25 30 000 bucks and i decide like no problem i'll just go ahead and buy something expensive and come even it can be for kitchen it can be personally but i need to discuss that is respect for the spouse 
that is respect for the family as a you know norm that one does Yes, Maybe thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Yeah, uh, inviting other questions. So please open your mic, video, and you can ask. Also on parenting, yes. Yeah, I would love that. That's uh, the area that I did my PhD on. And currently, I work with gifted children in the last 10 years uh, because we felt that that is an area that not many people have addressed. So I still continue to do counseling and um, a training in the area of uh, giftedness or people with high ability and high intelligence, how their relationships are and how they need to be addressed. It's a little different than the normal uh, setup. Yes, Ah, uh, Yes, uh, I sent a question. I think you've just answered. I just wanted to know the success rate in counseling because I do believe uh, a lot in it. Like I've always advised as my children to just go in for counseling whenever they are facing any crisis. So, but uh, in India, it's still not so prevalent. So we need to, you know, uh, let people know the rate of success uh, when people go in for counseling. I really don't know. Like, uh, uh, you know statistically, uh, I really don't know. But I believe um, if the two things that happens in counseling. Some people come for cathartic effects. They just come, they download, they feel nice. Uh, they get some okay. you know, uh, uh, understanding of the situation because somebody is just listening to them and they go back. They keep coming back because they just want yes. a sounding board. And you get an objective sounding board. There are another uh, category of people who need skill building, who need to develop that listening skill or communication skill, encouraging skill. And that is being in, uh, you know, done in a counseling session where they go, need to go and practice in their real life and come back and share what worked and what didn't work and it helps. So um, a counselor is a person who's able to do this objectively, but it all depends on the onus of the client and the readiness of what they do when they go back. They may feel wonderful when they come and talk to you. They feel very charged and encouraged. But when they go back and they say, ah, the la, that's very nice, but I don't think so. it works in mind. <laughs> There's no readiness then. That's no fault of the counselor as well, because that person needs to go back and practice. We are saying it's the same thing. It's like in a babyhood, you know, I was crawling and suddenly I started holding and walking. So when you're holding and walking, I need that support. So the counselor is the person who's giving the support. The counselor is going to let go of your hand. You have to continue to try to find out and go on your own. You can't be dependent on the counselor. The counselor is not going to help you to be dependent. At the same time, you need to develop skills that will help you to walk straight, start running and jumping as well. That's that answer. So it helps when people come with openness to change. It doesn't help if they come with a uh, thing of, uh, okay, my spouse wants me to come for counseling, so I'm coming, but I don't believe in it. Then it doesn't really work. You have to come with a, positive thing that I want to understand and see what I can do. Thank you, Karan. Uh, do, you, yeah, do you find uh, women taking uh, more easily to counseling than men? Yes, I agree. Like men have more reservations. About... <laughs> Why would this be? As women, we love uh, sharing and talking about it more uh, comfortably. Uh, men uh, hesitate. They are reservations. They are sometimes they are also being trained to be very private people. Oh, or is it because they don't want to admit uh, there is still that vestige uh, thing of uh, we are not wrong or we don't need advice or. You know, in, uh, it's an attitude problem or uh, what? I uh, wouldn't say, say that. I, I, they have been uh, couples who have come. Both uh, Sometimes it's the man who takes the lead. And so it's individuals okay. basically. And it's also the background in which they come from. You know, it's an individual, it, it's an individual space. I wouldn't say men versus women. And I'm not being diplomatic. It's just that. Uh, we don't also have male counselors. 
sometimes when man comes in he says i hope you're not like my wife who's also going to say ama you're a man right you you come with that notion of course we will be as uh, objective but some men don't like it this is i want to see a man who will see my side of the story we don't have that okay. many male counselors that could also be okay. the reason yeah okay okay thanks yes. so much thanks so much you're welcome kamini yeah hmm. yes bala yeah like as you have uh, mentioned about your phd on parenting i have a question i uh, think is like uh, uh, what is the age like which you can uh, say that like a particular kid is inclined towards uh, this kind of uh, area like example like they are uh, more uh, creative they are more inclined towards physical activities or something like that i am some i am trying to connect it with that uh, child prodigies so few people like at the age of a uh, very younger age like uh, you know they are very proficient something like that is there a way where like a parent can identify a kids uh, individual talent at an younger age so that like they'll be able to you know train them or put, uh, provide them with more opportunities so that they can uh, you know come out uh, good in a very younger age is there something like that uh yes uh you've touched on a topic that i can speak again for a couple of hours i will suggest atul if she could send a podcast of us which we talk on uh, i ability uh, you can uh, observe them from a very young age parents mm-hmm. definitely you know in fact as um, as they're growing up you see developmental stages going faster and uh, uh, then the children of their age you can make out that uh, children are showing signs that is one second is uh there is no clear cut that kids will um show a sign um uh, in terms of where the talent lies they may be experimenting and exploring but keep showing an inclination so supposing you think they are saying an architect for parayam they will keep talking what it suddenly you find that they've moved from there and they said that i would do using it in architecture so it becomes the main base and not architecture so we really don't know how it will really pan out so uh the focus would be to keep encouraging them to have an open mind the suggestion for career i would suggest is uh link it with the personality link it with the lifestyle and link it with passion what i passionately feel uh that i would be able to enjoy every day that is something that people have to really look at and when i say uh same lifestyle you're already comfortable with the one particular lifestyle you can't go below that you have to maintain that and you can definitely of course aspire for the sky nobody stopping you there but you can't get miserable by going down so if you're a wealthy person teach them wealth management if you're not a wealthy person teach them skills that help them to build a wealth for themselves so you your criteria for the child is to say i want you to be self sufficient independent enough but just saying is not going to help you have to demonstrate you have to demonstrate where um you teach them habits of excellence you teach them what reading and learning is all about you teach them uh, what skill building is you know in the course pani trukumbode idu panna you know it will add it to yourself you know or you could say that while you're studying if you do an internship that's what atulia does uh, we normally don't give undergrads the internship and stuff like that but she showed caliber to edit uh, put newsletters together and uh, and it became an, an, you know a wonderful asset for us so uh, in her three years of undergrad she has developed a lot of skills so when she goes to management and marketing she is able to expand more from there so today we need to tell, tell them um that they need to do that but that doesn't mean i keep atulia as an example and compare another child who wants to have you know irudha isna na ipdi da irukka pora i'm going to enjoy we say yes but also teach them responsibility with uh, freedom it can't be totally freedom that's where today's trick is uh my professors would say that india is a country where parents strive and use even their uh, retirement money for the future of their child you have to be selfish you have to be self uh, respectful of your own uh, wealth and stand up and say this is they can I, i've had children who have come at 11th grade and says uh, and my father is by, and this is for something like this huh? uh, 10000 worth of uh, a mobile 
but he has money of so many lakhs why can't he buy me for 30000 the father chooses not to buy for more than 10 15000 you don't deserve it why do i have to give you you earn it but the minute they ask this is oh apdiya seri parwala na i'll buy it for 30000 you've extended beyond the person's capacity then you've created a greed that goes on like i don't have to earn but i'll i'll find manipulative ways of getting it from the other person so you need not to be family it can be even an office you know vale panname eppadi i can just get my things going so we have to teach good worth ethics and habits that they carry forward with them so even when we are 40 and 50 i take up a course and do it i show what reading and writing is about i also show what enjoyment is about when you go on a holiday enjoy completely leave everything behind uh have good discussions and debates stuff like that so that's good parenting style basically does it answer what you are asking yeah definitely but i would li- like to uh, know get that link also which you said like uh... ha i'll ask atulia to send it across you can nice. look into being gifted in podcast and uh, you can look at youtube for uh, kaveri gifted education uh, center a lot of uh, youtubes that uh, i have personally uh, done which talks about how to look at children with high ability and even had conversation with adults who later in life realize that they are actually talented and gifted but nobody really realized them and that's why they couldn't make friends or that's why they struggled with certain aspects in their professional life Thank you. Thank yes anil see it does uh, environment matter because uh, you know to build relationship or renew relationship you know sometimes if we change the environment the culture in which or the place itself if we change sometimes you know it has a positive vibes on the relationship because as you rightly said during your talk sometimes familiarity breeds contempt so to get over that i think changing the environment can be one of the solutions sometimes uh, if we can afford it wonderful if we can't do a paint change a few things around the house uh, go for a holiday have a heart to heart talk first day do the roman uh, romantic part of it second day do the stormy part of it third day come to the reconciliation have a good holiday and come back if that is possible i i've had you know uh, most uh, significant crucial conversations when we were driving i tell my husband can't we have like people who sit across and talk illa vandi ottam bodhe he is sitting in the front i am sitting back ah in the distance edukalama adu pannalama adu pannalama and i'm like yeah. you know each one to the side initially i find like you know this is not right i want to sit across and talk and then say okay what was important that we have the conversation and we get the point across so is it across the table over a coffee or uh, it, it's on a holiday doesn't matter as long as we have time and we are able to do that and sometimes i think those are the moments when we are not on our digital uh, this thing and all that you know, either mobile phones or something like that i know, think are... social media is a detriment in relationships and uh, there has to be a norm and that goes if i have to add uh, bala uh, the etiquettes we show in terms of keeping the mobile away 9 30 10 i don't take calls no matter what it's on silent uh, i don't sleep with my mobile on by my bedside it's there in the other room it can you know uh, stuff like that really helps and when people are having conversation all the time looking uh, uh, ah you keep telling me that's not listening sit there across and say okay what is it you want to say have a conversation but if you know that the other person is going to take one full dramatic twist to the whole thing and say can you take a pause think all that you want to say and say it to me in two three lines so helping each other you know i tell me i would like to write down my points and then say sometimes or say that uh, if i'm going in circles okay give me 2 minutes let me just think what are the two things that i want to uh, address and have a talk because some fight would have happened you're talking about it and you think okay that person is in listening mode let me bring all the previous fights and sort it out today itself it's not going to happen today <laughs> today sambar i can have today only i can't bring yesterday sambar and say it's fresh and nice i have to throw that sambar spoke out and over let me make fresh sambar tomorrow so we need to uh, you know uh, keep things fresh as far as possible yeah it's almost we have come to the end of the you know session in terms of the time maybe we can take a few more questions but before that i would uh, love to listen about the book and you know where is it available and how we as uh, you 
you know, Alchemist Book Club can order the book, and if there is anything uh, in your mind on that. I've sent the link. Uh, Athilia will be posting it to you. It is available on Amazon and through in the source uh, publication. Um, the book has very good illustrations of case studies. Uh, we have put several points in terms of uh, elaborating more on the four C's. We've talked about how family influences and interferes. We talked about uh, when it is very difficult how to handle. We talked about uh, relationships that are outside the marriage and how it affects and how it needs to be addressed. Uh, ultimately, at those stages, we are talking about the goodness. We are not supporting, um, you know, husband is right or wife is right in what they are doing. But uh, we are talking about um, being sensitive to the family, being sensitive to the child in your life and being very, uh, they have, I mean, there is no right and wrong as to who is right and wrong in that situation. So we are not judging anybody. We are saying whatever choices you make, see that it, the, it is respectful and graceful for the family. That's what we are talking about, uh, largely. And uh, yes, our email addresses are put if there are any questions as far as the book and the things are concerned. Uh, you can also write to me. We all, uh, I'm always aware of counselors will be good and available uh, within some of the cities. So if you need any support, if people need support, we can do that. Uh, the other thing that can be done possible is have short workshops on skill building on marriage as and when time permits. That's like uh, stretching a lot, but then... Uh, the well-being of building relationships is something very close to both Mrs. Joshi and my heart. And I'm sure we'll always be game if we can have short uh, you know, sessions or lectures on taking some one particular topic and having conversations. I'm really extending because that, that would be really helpful because instead of doing one-to-one -one session, if we can do skill building and if you can share it with other people, that's how fragrance really goes like this. I put a perfume, which is very nice. You like the smell. You carry the fragrance and you transfer to another person. Mm -hmm. So that's how it is. Instead, if I bring in uh, dirt and uh, you know anger and foul smell, you're going to go with the foul smell and uh, this one and move. So for us as counselors and psychologists, both uh, Mrs. Joshi and myself always believed in building relationships. And we believed that people have the goodness in them. They should look in and take I mean, it's why did we even think of marrying this person? Because there was some connection and that connection helped us in so many years. You can't suddenly say, I want to break it off and I feel it's difficult. It's getting too tough and all that. Maybe sometimes it is really very tough. You feel that you're on a dead end. Don't give up. Take rest. Sit. Take a breather. You know, that's what happens. I, I talk about surfing sometimes, you know. How do surfers do? I like that, that they look at the water. The water is too high. If it's good for surfing, they go. If it's not good, they step back and wait. So, pause is good. Pause, I have to be always on movement. No, pause is also good. People think pause, na, I'm giving up. I'm No, that is good. Take a break. That doesn't mean that you have to always be constantly in a conversation and solution mode. This corporate dialogue doesn't work here. Solution, where is the solution? Where is the alternative? Where is this? No, this is life. Come on. And this is my wife, my husband. And I need to look for alternatives. I have to look for things that will help me. That really is something that one needs to uh, really. And carry fragrance. That's what we say. Be from orange to green as far as poetry. Bring people in your life who will. When we did workshops for women on women empowerment, they loved gossiping. Now I would tell them. I gave them one day of 45 minutes to one hour. I said, Whatever you want to talk, just spit it out down here. After that, I don't want mother-in-law, this father-in-law, this sister-in-law, this father, brother, my son, my daughter, my daughter-in-law. No nonsense. You cannot be the carrier of foul smell. You know, spit it out, go back and say, how can I look at it in a new light? And you need more people to talk about it in a more positive and encouraging uh, space. 
that is what we need to do and that's what we keep talking about and i say that even in my office I, when i go i say that they're not every day that i'm smiling and sunny the days when i'm foul mode if i am please tell me they's not keep quiet they have every right i could be the most senior person i have given them the i can't say i give i've given them i have to make that environment positive so i say you have the right to tell me that there's not you're being a pain in my life now just shut up and keep quiet today because you're not in a good mood we will not have the meeting today <laughs> they, they tell me this is i think you had you just sit down i say okay fine not today let's look at it later have the courage to accept mistakes that's also a very big thing and all that is there in our shastra we have always talked about it when we look at it we always look at it from a spiritual angle let's look at it in a normal angle that's about it no, no, and i'm so happy we have so many men in this group hats off i am so so very um feel very nice and connected that you have taken the space to step in uh because it's very rare and you've defied that uh dialogue mrs kamini was telling me about where do men come i see only men i have not seen women here now i think we are equally distributed in this so when books bring all of them together i think yeah that's great wonderful wonderful <laughs> really nice i'm yes. so happy no no you touched upon surfing as a very good lesson because uh, whenever we go surfing of kovalam beach we have seen that when we wait for a good wave to come in you know that waiting period is the time when we have good conversation with fellow surfers and that's <laughs> the time when we, when we have patience and you know we get so much this thing because we are waiting for something good to happen we always hope that the next wave which is going to come would be a good wave in which we can surf i think that's what a very good uh, analogy that you have given oh yeah. i didn't know anil i'm jealous that is a dream one is uh... uh ice skating going uh i i just fantasize about these things surfing, yeah. surfing i i love the yeah. power of it you know it's yeah. so beautiful yes. and wonderful i think i think you should come to this uh, kovalam beach there are two surf clubs there where i go every sunday okay. very few people come over there and there is a surf school which teaches surfing i think okay. uh, many very few people in fact uh, if most of the chennaiites can go and join surfing i think most of the relationship problems <laughs> that can do kickboxing for men uh, yoga meditation all that yeah. helps not smoking drinking good habits let's bring in good habits jogging all this is a good and you can cycling or even going on treks and holidays everything need have to be strenuous it can be relaxing and uh, cool and nice as well wonderful it's been a wonderful time discussing with you such passionately discussing about a very supposedly very dry and you know a remote topic called relationship it's wonderful uh, i know we can go on and on discussing about this but uh, thanks for allowing us to share our concern or share our thoughts in the email i you know email id what you share uh, over to atulya to uh, i would like to also say that uh, if uh, yeah. you want to do bulk orders i could uh, say uh, send you contact number of uh, the publisher with the contact person who can uh you contact them then you would get some discounts and stuff like that if you do bulk orders for your club yeah you can reach out to me yeah. and i can definitely pass on that information yes thank you for that thank you so much thank you for the wonderful opportunity and uh, all of you being patient and listening to all this uh there's so many things that i i would continue to want to share but it has been a wonderful evening for me and uh, i hope that you were able to take a few points that will help share the fragrance with other fellows uh, in your life and all the very best and have a wonderful bonded marital life it's wonderful keep looking at the fragrance and i'm sure of course there are times when we do go down but then there are times when we go up so we need to embrace both equally thank you so much thank you thanks thank you. a lot and one sec ma'am i want atulya to give a wine yeah. atulya over yeah. to you yeah. so I would like to first you know, say that whatever happens happens for the good, and if you know, most of you might not have known, we have been in the back of this session. It has been postponed it thrice, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and I don't think uh, I think uh, Dr. Devasena had justified the postpone by bringing out such a lovely session. We wouldn't have wanted you to you know divert your attention to something else by leaving out some points for us. So let's first be thankful for that for having. all of your attention and your time to for the members of the club 
and secondly you know thank you so much for the bulk order uh, contact that you shared and i think most of the most of the members would now uh, you know like to get the book from you and i think it's a wonderful wedding gift huh? actually it started off with um, we don't have kids uh, we have uh, we are mentors for a lot of children who are gifted and talented uh, and i started writing that book for them uh, they were 24 at that time now they are 35 and uh, then I, I, it changed to wanting to give it for my niece and nephew i did give it to my niece i don't know whether she's a millennial whether she will read but nevertheless we are contributing to the society at large and we are saying uh, you know it's it's a gift that you can give a person who is going to college because it talks about romance and selection and what do you really do with uh, your time and it also goes into the initial stages of marriage so i think it's a wonderful gift so agreed and i i remember starting our call today by asking why did why did you keep such a threatening name for your book and uh, you first started off the session by explaining rightly that you know you wanted to come this as you know uh, say that this is what is happening in real life and i want to put this thought in people's mind and how you rightly explained about the various stages in marriage through beautiful illustrations and diagrams and about trust building and the ways to do it it was very fun hearing your you know small small metaphors towards the end where you compared marriage to being uh, equal into surfing or even the fragrance example so i hope the members got uh, um, to interact with you a lot and got a lot of insights from you on this topic and as i st- as said in the beginning i hope they make a choice of happy ending after this so thank yes you so <laughs> nice thank you thank you thanks thank a lot atilya for coordinating it's wonderful okay and it's uh, again um, Dr. Devasana Desai, thanks very much for uh, coming out to club and addressing us. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, uh, thank I you, thank you for the privilege. Mentioned that she's an avid reader. Maybe during one of her Chennai visits, we can come here as a reader rather than. Yeah, like- I'd love that. I'd lo- really love that. I l- live here in Pune, and uh, I'm Tamilian by birth. Uh, I'm married to a person who is from Karnataka. Uh, is she stuck? Yeah, um, there's some, yeah, I think there's an outage at our side. That's okay. I think she, we are all, almost winding up. Yeah. yeah. So thanks a lot for every one of you also who stayed till the end. Hope you all got what uh, it's meant for. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's meet uh, next time with another beautiful session. Thank, Thank you. So you. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. It was an amazing session.